Welcome back to Logic Basics. We are going to start talking about testing, uh, testing categorical syllogisms for validity. Uh, I'm going to go back to the iPad where we left off last time, but first let's read this. To test for validity, put the syllogism in its pure form. Identify its mood. We're, we've been doing that. We've put it in pure form. Uh, that's when you take out all the words and you just use the letters. Identify the S, P, and M terms and quantify each as universal or particular. So that's the little U's and little P's. Apply the rules 1 through 5 above. Specifically, which rule is broken if it is invalid? Overextension of the P term is illicit major. For the S term, it's illicit minor. And for the middle term, it's going to be undistributed middle. So let's go back to our rules. Really, this is only going to be rule one and two that we apply because we've already done uh, three through five earlier when we were doing the moods. So now we're going to test for overextension of the S or P term from premise to conclusion. I will show you what that means. And then the M term must be universal at least once. Also notice that uh, there's a part here about validity of the categorical syllogism may be tested by Venn diagram. So that will be what we do after this session. All right, now let's go back to the iPad. We left off here where we had the eight moods and we're going to put them into figures one through four. And I'm going to show you how to do that with the IEO that is never valid. And I'm going to show you why it's never valid. Um, so I hope you have this written down. I'm going to clear the, the iPad now and I'm going to do uh, IEO. Okay, so I want to do IEO figure one first. So what does that look like, IEO one? What does that stand for? Remember, figure one was a diagonal, okay? So um, that means the M terms, the middle terms, are diagonal. And that means our P term is here, and our S term is here. And remember, S and P are in the conclusion. So this is my figure. So the number represents the figure, all right? The letters represent the mood. And when I put them together, then I get what my syllogism is. So I, remember, this is going to be like this. I, E, O. So I is sum. Sum is, right? So I'm just gonna fill it in using the I statement. E is no. No S is M. And then O is sum is not. Okay, so that is what this syllogism looks like once I combine the mood and the figure. Now I have to give those little U's and little P's to each of the categorical statements. So remember I is PP. So we're gonna put PP here. E is U, U. O, remember, is P, U, okay? Now we have all the parts to determine whether this is a valid argument form. Is it well formed? So I'm gonna show you that it isn't, and here's why. Remember that no overextension from the premise to the conclusion rule? Well, we have that happening here. So our P term in the premise is particular. So this is saying at least one, but our P term in the conclusion is universal, meaning all of them, actually this is a, a universal negative, so none of them. So uh, this particular P changes to a universal P in the conclusion. That is wrong, always, everywhere. This is called, uh, so we're gonna say this is invalid because it's illicit, major. So the major premise is going from particular to universal and that's bad. And we're going to find out that I, uh, IEO 
does this every time. That's why it's never going to be a, a well-formed syllogism. All right, so that's one. Let me show you. I'm going to try to pick it up a little bit here. I, E, O, 2. And remember, 2 is where my middle terms are up and down and the rest of the arguments to the other side. So here's my middle term, my P and S terms, and my S and P terms. And so it's I, E, O, <clears throat> which means sum, P is M, no, S is M, and sum, S is not P. I'm going to assign my little U's and little P's. Again, I is P, P, E is U, U, and O is P, U. Um, so first I look at my, you, you have to look at the S term too. Now, it is okay when you have a universal in a premise and a particular in a conclusion because remember, universals include particulars, but particulars don't necessarily include universals. So this is good. This is okay. And I'm also checking my middle term. I have a, a universal here, at least one. So that's, that's good. At least one universal. This is good. It's where we get to the P term again. It's a particular in the premise and a universal in the conclusion, and that's illicit major again. So this is invalid, and it is illicit major. So that, this uh, IEO2 argument form is never going to be valid. Um, let's do IEO3. I'm just going to do each of these to show you how it's done, and you get to do all the rest. IEO3. Remember, 3 is now where the M terms come first, and the rest of the argument is to the right of that. So here's our middle term, here's our P term, our S term, S and P, I, E, O. So sum, M is P, no, M is S, sum, S is not P, little U's and little P's. P, P, U, U, P, U. Again, uh, if I were looking at just my S terms, this is good. That checks out. If I were looking at my middle terms, that's good. It checks out. It's when we get to the P term. We have the same problem here. There's a particular in the premise and a universal in the conclusion. So we've gone from P to U, and that's wrong. Illicit major and i'm telling you they're each going to do the same thing for this ieo so let's do the last one ieo4 ieo4 4. 4 is where my middle terms are uh, this diagonal so i have middle middle p s and sp and um, sum, sum P is M, no M is S, sum S is not P. My little U's and little P's are going to be the same for this one now. P, P, U, U, P, U. And the same problem occurs. Notice my S's are okay. Universal to particular is okay. We got a universal at least once here, but again, we have this particular to universal, and that's invalid, and it's illicit major again. So every time we do IEO4, we get an invalid argument form. So we've taken it off of our list. You don't have to do that one. So the ones you do need to do, I will list them once again, and I'll even do one of them for you. The ones we want to do again are A, 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 E, E, A, I, I, A, O, O, E, A, E, E, I, O, I, A, I, and O, A, O. And let's number these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These are the moods, and I want you to put them in the figures. 
now, okay? Figures one through four through for each of these, okay? One through four. So that'll be 32 problems that you're going to do. I'll do one. Which one do you want me to do? Uh, I'll pick I, A, I, I, three. Let's do that. A, I, I, figure three. All right, so remember figure three looks like this. So the M's, middle terms first, then my P, then my S. S and P is always the same in the conclusion. And let me get this out of the way. And then you're going to go, okay, this is an A. So A is all. All M is P. I is sum. M is S. And then I is sum. S is P. Okay, you see how I did that? Now, little U's and little P's. Remember, A is U, P. I is P, P. And I is P, P. Okay, now I'm going to check my work. Let's first look at the S terms here. S is P in the premise and P in the conclusion. That's good. That checks out. My middle term is universal at least once. That checks out. And then let's look at our P term. Hey, guess what? This one's P in the premise and P in the conclusion. That's good too. It's only bad if you go from P in the premise to U in the conclusion for the P term or the S term. All right, so this is valid. Yay. Now, I'm going to pause here. I'm going to keep this on the screen. What we're going to do next is we're going to use this AII3 to learn how to do Venn diagrams for each of these. Your homework now is to go through each of these and to do figures one through four for each of these eight problems. Now, um, I don't have the exact number of how many are valid out of those 32. I did know that once, but I've forgotten. Maybe it's in the Kreeft book. Uh, but each of the valid argument forms has a Latin female name that goes with it. Uh, you, can, you can Google that. It's probably in the book, too, the names. Uh, it's just a fun fact. Like AAA figure one is always valid, and it's called Barbara. So we'll do Barbara next time. Um, I don't know what this one is. This is AII3. It has a name. I don't know what its name is. Maybe you want to do that research. Find the name for AII3. Okay, next time, Venn diagrams. It's going to be awesome.